Hello and welcome to this third lecture of uh, determining design requirements in this section on prototype development for this course in which we are trying to tell you about how to develop winning prototype. So far, uh, so uh, my name is Arun Singhal, your management coach and mentor with 40 years of experience in people development. So far, we've been trying to give you a good understanding of how to determine design requirements for prototype development and in which uh, we start with overall process. And in the last one, we went through the uh, first five houses, as we will see in the, one of the next slides. In this lecture, we will talk about how do we complete the rest of the parts of determining design requirements. So uh, let's recap of what did we do so far to determine the design requirements uh, using the house of quality. And what we have gone around, we have gone around in the five houses, including the roof uh, of the house of quality. We started with the leftmost room in which we uh, recaptured the CTQs determined earlier and we populated them with customer ratings. Then we, based on the customer uh, requirements, we worked out what are the design requirements using a Y is equal to FX approach. And then we populated the correlation between the design requirements and the customer requirements using uh, plus minus uh, 139 uh, relationship uh, weights. And then we uh, worked out, the, when we figured out, we populated based on customer ratings, the competitive uh, ratings of the uh, competitor's product on the customer requirements. And finally, we climbed up to the roof to see what are the correlations between the various design parameters. And we found one of them was negatively correlated, while most of them were positively correlated. So with that, we now go to the next stage uh, in which we uh, now go to the bottom of uh, uh, the house and we prioritize, identify and prioritize the design requirements that have the most influence on meeting the customer requirements. So DRs and CRs standing for design requirements and CRs standing for customer requirements. So let's see how do we do that. So it, it is a more a mathematical process. Uh, so the way we do is uh, we take one customer requirement at a time, uh, one design requirement at a time, look at the customer wherever we have given a relationship metric score of 139 plus minus and multiply with the corresponding customer importance rating as you see here and arrive at a total score, weighted average total score at the bottom an importance rating. Example, in this case, uh, if we are looking at effective microbe trap tracking, trapping uh, design requirement, the relationship matrix weight is 9, the customer importance is 9, so 9 to 9, 81 plus the next uh, relationship is 9 again on a uh, parameter or requirement of uh, reliable water purifier. So we do 9 into 545 equals 1 to 26 and that goes in the importance rating at the bottom line that you say yeah and like this uh, we calculated the rest of the rows and so we have for each of the design requirements that you see at the top you have the importance rating as such so 126 109 126 81 etc etc and we then rank relatively highest being here 186 which is the effective solid trapping is the most important and the next most important being killing microorganisms and effective microbe trapping. So like this we determine what are the most important design requirements and we have a rank order of all of them. Right. So with that, we have completed the development of design requirements uh, in which we have uh, now we can uh, fill the middle table of uh, the design requirement ranks priority right so we have those weights assigned at the bottom green portion and we start with the first one which is effective solid strapping second one effective micro strapping third one being killing microorganisms four three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven like this we have in ranked order the design requirement specified right so this how does this help uh, the prioritization this prioritization helps specifically in cases where we have uh, negatively correlated design requirements, which means that if we try and improve one, that we have to compromise on the other. 
and we see here the two are negatively correlated design requirements no media leaching and the re, re, uh, resistance contact time the resistance con contact time is negatively correlated with no media latching so in this case if we have to increase one we will have to compromise another and this importance ranking tells us where to compromise so if we have to compromise we if we have to we would since the media no media uh, leaching is eighth rank with 81 score versus 109 of uh, the uh, resistance contact time so we would uh, if we have to choose between the two we will give priority to residence contact time versus no media leaching because that will help us determine the customer requirements in an overall sense better right so that's how this prioritization helps us so what about the cost targets how does one develop we have so far have we had customer requirements we determined design requirements ranked in order so how do we now determine the cost targets so you determine cost targets uh, in a very system you can determine in a very systematic process you st as you see on your screen you start with the selling price based on the market conditions so you have a product you have competitors product and your marketing will tell you okay if you are the marketing you would have decided whether you want to price them at parity you price them at a certain discount or you want to price them at certain premium and you would have determined the selling price as you can see in this case right then we agree on what kind of profit margins do we need to uh, expect from this product and based on that profit margin we deduct it and we determine the target cost now uh, if there are other costs associated in terms of dealer margins taxes etc we did we deduct all of those before we actually deduct the profit margin so there is a gross sales price then we determine the net sales price then we deduct the uh, profit margins expected and then we get a target cost then we don't stop there we decompose uh, the, that total product target into the component or subsystem level cost and then we identify ways to produce the component with the allocated cost so we have detailed cost targets for the overall product and for specific components that we need to meet so that's how we, we get the cost targets it may be a little uh, premature to do too much uh, fine-tuned and firm component wise cost targeting but definitely at the product level you could be have a good cost target that you like to be each keeping the component wide cost target flexible as you go forward right so what do we do having uh, done the design requirements including the cost targets uh, done and identified what do we do next if with that uh, determined uh, design requirements specified we are now in a good position to start developing the best design idea and that's what we will look at in the next module and before that you will have an assignment on how do you determine the design requirements which is not mentioned in the slide but uh, please go ahead and do that assignment uh, determine your design requirements using the house of quality process uh, share with me in the form of the answers to the question as well as whatever work you've done happy to help you fine tune them and give you feedback on them so thank you so much for watching the third and final lecture of this section of determining design requirements i hope you continue to learn a lot of new things you continue to like them and you are enjoying them thank you so much and i look forward to see you again in the next section and next lecture